I've been asking my neighbour to take care of this tree which hangs over our block for years. And during the night, this has dropped on the cars. the back of my wife's car from that she thought my car probably caught the brunt of it but it looks like hers did Mine's got this stuck in amongst the mirror, but that's where it's broken further out. Packing up for the night. Today, I've got this extra bit of wall built it's up to the up to the beam. I've still got to put noggins in this one that I got I got the noggins put in along that wall one to go and the reason I only got those done is because it was getting dark and I didn't want to go up to the van and grab more timber but so this wall's built in three sections got these little pieces in where the beams are to keep them all connected there I had to put in these pieces up the top in between the floor joists so they had somewhere to screw the top plate to. This top plate was able to go into the joist because the joists are staggered through here. Um, I was still going to figure out what I'm going to do with that very end one because there's nothing above that. As you can see there, I've attached, attached the wall frames like the bottom plates to the floor along the along here as well so tomorrow I'm gonna get these noggins done I want to put the frame that needs to go here because there's the there's where the edge of the pocket door will come to so this is just an, an 800 mil wall so I'll get the stuff out of the van and build that I hung the pocket doors this is the one that goes into the other room. And the bathroom one. Bathroom, powder room. But I haven't done any of this yet. And my, they still need to be painted. I haven't sort of, I haven't painted the edges, top, bottoms, anything like that. And I took them outside to actually start doing that. The wind today, they would have dried, but I probably would have gotten crap blown into them as well. It also gets them out of the way rather than having to have them standing around and moving them and that sort of thing. I think one of the ways that I'll probably stiffen this frame up is when I build the frame that's going to go across here above the water heater because it'll probably be about here and I might just build that frame and then screw, the, screw it to here and there and that'll help stiffen that up. And then after that I've got to do this frame in behind the the washer or where the dryer will go. That one we want to have sort of come in a bit because of the, the tap work. I did want to try and get some of the, the yard work done today too, but I just thought look, I had really good weather. I was going to do get some of this done because I could do it. If I'm going to do another bit of that tomorrow, like I said, that little 800 wall, then it'll mean that this room will basically almost be framed out. My idea with putting all, getting all the noggins in and all that sort of stuff on here is that it's gonna be cabinetry right along this wall. So I can put the insulation in and the plasterboard for the bottom half of the wall, because that'll be here, they're 1200 sheets. And any electrical work that needs to be done by the electrician when they come in 
that it can all be done because it comes down from up the top and it's going to be above counters and the counters are around counters are around 900 high roughly three feet so the plasterboard will be here counter height here so you'd be thinking that you'd have power points a little bit above except for where we're going to put the we do have a little bar fridge for going in this room and it's going to be it's a neat little small one that'll fit inside the cabinet so up in the cabinetry and um, below the countertop so we'll need to have a power point for that mainly going to be a matter of getting this power moved maybe a few other lines that's why i need to get the electricians in felt like we got a bit done today Parked a little bit further back on the road this time. It's still tar here, and it's um, but there's like a little little turnout part down there, so I've just parked there. Said the other night to my wife that I could probably just walk Sam from the house, and she said, "Yeah, well, there's a lot of hills before you get to where you've been walking them. It might not." be so good I could have come up here I've just stopped there's a grassy patch just here I would have parked here instead of right down the bottom I normally park a lot further up this road the dirt starts just up here and then it goes for a little bit then goes down a hill and then that's where I'd normally park this little one a bit more active he's about 10 we need to get him some exercise because he's been getting Tubby like me just sitting around. So this little hill be good for both of us. Just hope it doesn't annoy my back too much. Spent the morning weed whacking the backyard because I can't use a mower because of the slope and the unevenness. So I've done that have to rake it all up. We'll still need to do the front yard. So the fine weather I decided is that as a priority rather than more of the framing even though I want to get the framing done. Getting him out. Definitely a priority. You can hear other weed whackers or chainsaws around the place. Trail bikes. This is where the dirt road starts. I'm in the Jimmy DeResta camp. They're wanting sunnies and needing to be able to see at the same time. Two better like that. One under the other. It's one thing I like about these sunnies that they fit over the top of my glasses. That's a boy. I know it looks a bit weird because I cut all the grass. I don't know why he's more afraid of it now. Come on, Sam. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Taking a bit of a pause in what I've been doing just to sort of show what I've been doing. So. Framing got done. Did this little end wall and 
knob and up the top of the um, pocket door. So that I can now open and shut. So I still need to do the the trim. So I'll last the put down in this corner. But this bit of plasterboard on because that needed to. With I wasn't quite when I was building the wall. Only just left enough to screw the board into and I couldn't really undo all that because I screwed that in from the top and bottom instead of skewing the screws. Hindsight, that's bolted to the floor or screwed to the floor. I've got plasterboard up halfway the wall and that's all insulated in behind it as well. So that's there's two full sheets, so it's um, it's just shy of 4.8 metres long there. Um, leaving the top open because we still need to get the electrical done with the electricians. Um, but because I started bringing out plasterboard, I have two full sheets, but there was a little sheet for this bit in the corner. This is the bar fridge and the tiles that we're going to use for this area and some of the some of the other doors all the tassie oak doors got to frame up just to connect this and this that basically secured this part of the frame up that's nice and solid um, gives plenty of room to be able to get in if you need to get to the water heater, you can get down in here. Room above it, I'll probably frame out just this box section so I'm not blocking off the pipework too much. Come up with some sort of doors. I've got some doors here that allow ventilation through, um, that are actually from, they used to be in the kitchen. Power room. Got sheeting up on the pocket door and down the bottom and these screws here are only temporary because the um the timber for the pocket doors this stuff's only about 10 mil three eighths of an inch if that which means the shortest plasterboard screws i've got are 25 mil the plasterboard's only so what I've used instead is stud adhesive. You put several dollars of that on. I was able to screw right up at the top because I've got framework up there. But down the sides of this, I put the screws in. So they're basically doing a temporary hold. Stud adhesive takes about 24 hours to dry and set. Um, so these these screws aren't all the way in they're just in far enough the points were just coming through the the back of the board those that timber so that one those two those two and the ones i've got down lower they'll all come out later i'll go do that tomorrow or whenever but the stud adhesive will keep all that in place it's strong stuff it's horrible stuff to try and get a board off when i was doing the lounge room and the bedrooms and all that sort of doing the ceilings there was stud adhesive on the on the joists and yeah you, that dries hard anyway so the room is starting to really come along um still would frame up behind the behind the washer and probably around the entrance door I was thinking that like doing this sort of stuff was gonna yeah empty the shed out a little bit make a bit of space but that whole bottom section was only one bag and it was the leftover stuff of the bag from insulating that wall and around the pipe of the um the powder room so the exterior wall so after doing all of that, the rest of the bag did that whole 4.8 metre section. 
I've still got bats left in that bag, only a few, but I just thought I'd stop there because I've got to move some more stuff around and I'd end up putting it all in front of the wall like I'd started to with like the, the stuff in the corner. I wanted to show it off before moving stuff, but I started moving stuff like I want. All of this stuff was all right down the middle of the room. You've got to always walk around it. It's starting to look like a laundry. Built out laundry, I should say. So it's Tuesday, I know. And I got, got my laundry sink temporarily installed. Temporarily in terms of I don't have the proper countertop, so I made a temporary countertop out of an old internal door. And so that sink cabinet got attached to the wall, got it all connected. And so now because that's all connected, I've got some stuff that I don't no longer need. So I'm going down to Bunnings to return some stuff. Whenever I'm doing things, I always buy, buy more than what you need. So the last thing you want to do is be halfway through a job and you have to stop because you don't have a piece or a part or a, a piece of hardware or something like that so if you if you're planning for a job you know, buy a little bit more than what you need one extra two extra or whatever because you can always return them if you haven't used them at all just going down to valley heights because it's the closest one and it is by 4 30 so i can return these things there's a couple of stuff that I need to get it's, it's whether I didn't have for something else. Taking little Sam with me to the to Bunnings, he's been really mopey and depressed, um, understandably like the rest of us. But he doesn't. He's he's not all happy. He's not eating. I think it took him a day or two to really realise that L U C K Y. It took him a few days to realise that his brother wasn't coming back and so he's been really sad in the house and not eating and not wanting to go out, not as excited on his walk. So I'm just trying to get him out of the house. I've still got the shoulder bag that we bought for his brother so I'm going to pop him in that and go into Bunnings and hopefully there's no big issue with it. I'm sure I've seen somebody walk in with a little dog once before, like an elderly person. Initially we'll think, let's just, I'll just go down, I'll crack the windows, he can stay in the car, but I really don't like the idea of leaving a dog in the car, even though it's, it's cool out. The inside of the car can start to warm up. So, yeah, I'm gonna pop him in, pop him in the bag. See how he copes with it. Because he hasn't been in it before. What do you think of Bunnings, Sam? Do you like Bunnings? Huh? We got the stuff we need. Let's head out. So after last night's update, when I was showing all this part off, I did get the insulation in behind the sink and put that all on and it just goes, it goes past the window at the moment. I'll be able to cut that down to where the framing is going to be here. Uh, and, but that went right up into the corner. I ended up having to piece the timber in here because at the very bottom of the wall, it was only about a quarter of an inch. So six mil. Up at the top, it's about 30. So. That's because the, the bricks kind of lean out a little bit. Uh, so I got that in there so that I can get the plasterboard attached right in the corner. Did that last night. Did a coat of undercoat on here on the wall so that I can put the cabinet up. And so then this morning, or well today, I got this cabinet installed. Temporary counter out of an old hollow core door. Hollow core doors are the new countertop. This cabinet is centered with the window. Aesthetically, my wife said, it'd be nice to have the tap centered with the center of the window. But the laundry, the tubs are different sizes and the tap 
sits over on that side. So that's not going to happen. The space that's left down here is about 595 and that's one of what that door is. So I'm going to build a cabinet and there will be a door ready to go which is matching. This little pull out bin will end up going here so I've got to build another little cabinet just there. Uh, this morning before putting this into place this is screwed to the cabinet just for the main moment and the sink is there so it can be used so i've got this sheet of plasterboard up against on the the cavity door thing similar thing using um stud adhesive you can see this stuff is a little bit gooey cut that off so that it doesn't interfere with the plaster put sheet that's got to go here but then again screws only partially in I'll take those off tomorrow because that'll be set the other one set really well to all the screws out of that and um, tonight I'm going to tape and do a first coat of plaster mudding on that sink is operational I put some water in there just like I did with the little powder room sink. Put some water into the sink, put the plug in and um, just filled them and left them sit just to make sure no water leaked around the, um, the drainage sections. And also then let water go down a few times just to check all the plumbing issues like the outlet plumbing to make sure there's no leaks in that. So the last thing you want to do is get everything set up and then find a leak. Um, which is why the plumbers checked all of the, the lines um, and that sort of stuff before they go. But still, you can still get small leaks. Don't know if I talked about the plumbing much. See this stuff here? This is the plumbing that goes to the outside. This is where the old outdoor tap was. And so I've got a a hot and cold line running outdoors. I don't know what they've got in other parts of the world, but this is a new compression fitting that they are using with plumbing now. And one of the plumbers did say, like, it, it's about 85, 90% of the work they do. They still do do some silver soldering, brazing, that sort of stuff. But most of it's this sort of stuff, so you'll find little joints all over the place. You can see up here where they ran the line to go over to the sink. They use the little connectors rather than doing pipe bends. Same thing up there. This was a different plumber did this one when they put in a water line for our fridge up in the kitchen um, for the ice maker. When they did the laundry ones, when they moved these taps, so they'll be down lower for the washing machine. They did some of those little compression fittings, but they started to leak a little bit, only really, really slightly. You just just catch the, seeing a drip. And so the plumber came back out and replaced it with old style bends and silver soldering, brazing. They had, those were dead, already brazed, but just the extra connections um, and they just said like the distances were just too small or too short for using some of these compression fittings because obviously this pipe comes all the way through to here so that it can be squeezed this bit of pipe goes all the way up to here so the o-ring that's in here when they compress it it saves it and um this was one of the ones when they were out here the first time testing he turned the water on and we got a slight drip and when he came down he went oh yeah i forgot to he hadn't actually compressed one of them but the drip was so slight and he said yeah sometimes like the o-ring has enough pressure in there as soon as he compressed it no more leak but so i was talking with the other guy 
because when I was going through uni, they showed us to uni 23 years ago. They taught us brazing because these compression fittings weren't around back then. So we would do brazing on piping because that's the most long lasting. <laughs> um, you can still get problems with brazing if it's not um, if it's not cleaned properly. You get just like any other welding, you can get um, porosity inside it, and so like welds won't be right if you don't braze correctly or silver solder correctly. Then the, um, you will have tiny pinholes, which is enough for a leak with water, especially with the pressure that will go through your pipes. So. But it's good that's all in, like I said, now that it turns out that, that the plumbers I got in were a group that I asked them if they could recommend any electricians and, and he said that they actually have an electrical division because they do all of the bathrooms, plumbing and so rather than having to call in a subcontracting electrician all the time they have their own division so we're going to be getting, I think we'll be getting them in because I was really happy with the work of the plumbers um, to do all of our electrical work here. Which I'll have to do soon. Because that's got to be what we do here. We work out the cabinetry for along here. So that we know the position of power point for the bar fridge. Um, any little power points we want to have along here. Any little power points we want to have along here. We've already got the power for the washer and dryer. But it'll need to be moved because we don't want it left up there on the wall. It'll want to be down here behind the the washers.